Well, a diet rich in nutrients is a great start. Try to eat a wide variety of foods, um, and based on eating well with Canada's food guide is a great start. You can use that as a resource for guiding what you should eat in, in the proper amounts. So this will help you to optimize your health on a daily basis. Each food group contains different nutrients, and so within each food group there are better and not so great choices. And really educating yourself about the different food groups and what you should be eating in the proper amounts will make a big difference. So making some permanent changes to the way you eat and your lifestyle, including your exercise, can make a huge um, improvement in your diet and long term the benefits can be weight control. So eating, eating Well with Canada's Food Guide was revised in 2008. Uh, there's been some tweaks to really increase certain amounts in the vegetable and fruit group, lower our consumption of grain products. Uh, increase the milk products slightly, especially if you're over 50 to get enough calcium, and the meats and alternate alternative group has stayed about the same. So in terms of vegetables and fruits, this would be one serving, one orange or a medium, most medium fruits would be one serving. Half a medium banana would also be a serving. Half a cup of uh, cooked vegetables would be considered a serving. So half a cup or 125 mils. For raw greens, one cup or 250 mils would be considered a serving. If you cooked that, half a cup of leafy greens would be considered a serving. Um, <clears throat> one easy way to get enough from this group, the vegetable and fruit group, is to try and have two servings at each meal and then choose from that group for in-between meal snacks. Only 40% of Canadians are actually consuming their fruits and vegetables on a daily basis and this is a strong indicator for long-term weight control. So it really is a very important group that we all need to make sure we're getting enough of. Try to consume at least one green, um, a green vegetable every day and an orange vegetable every day and try and fill your your plate with colorful foods. It's the best way to ensure you're getting enough fruits and vegetables. Grain products, most people overconsume this group. One serving would be considered a slice of bread, half a cup or 125 mils of rice. Brown rice would be better than white rice because of the fiber. Half a bagel would be considered a serving. One muffin, notice the size, would be considered one serving from that group. So most commercial muffins that you buy, you're getting three or four servings worth of your grain product group. So within this group, uh, try to sh make choices that are high in fiber, low in fat, and try and choose the white choices or the more refined choices less often. Milk and alternatives. Two to three servings a day is what you need. Um, chocolate milk does count. White milk, uh, one cup or 250 mils would be considered a serving. Three quarters of a cup of yogurt or 175 mils would be considered a serving. Uh, one and a half ounces of cheese would also be considered a serving. This is a, an important group for calcium, protein, and riboflavin. Uh, one serving contains about 300 milligrams of calcium for a cup of milk. Very important for strong, healthy bones. Try to stick to the lower fat choices, so skim or 1% milk or yogurt, and the cheeses should be less than 18%. Meats and alternatives, two to three servings is what you need from that, this group. So two to three ounces, that's three ounces of chicken, would be considered a serving. Two ounces of two tablespoons of peanut butter. This is one tablespoon, so you'd need two for a serving. Uh, two eggs would be considered a serving. Fish is an excellent choice. You should try and get fish at least twice a week from this group. Uh, high in omega-3s, which we'll talk about shortly. And 
find shows the vegetarian sources more often um, just because they are a great source of protein and fiber. Well, portion control is a real important point that a lot of people don't seem to realize. It's not only what you eat, but it's how much you eat. Uh, portion sizes over the last 20 years in restaurants, in fast food outlets, have grown tremendously. Uh, we no longer know how much we're supposed to be eating. Most people see these portion sizes from Canada's Food Guide and, and say, oh, I had no idea. So, in terms of, um, aside from portions, it's really important to stay hydrated. Canada's Food Guide recommends 8 to 12 cups of fluid a day, uh, or 2 to 3 liters a day, and that includes water, tea, coffee, juices, milk, soups, um, off, fluids from all sources, basically. Tea and coffee didn't used to count, but now they do. Just make sure that you don't have more than four cups of coffee a day because of the caffeine. If you are trying to lose weight, drink mostly water because water is calorie free. So calories can add up quickly from other beverages and quick, quicker than you might think, especially from large amounts of juice um, or specialty coffee drinks, things like that. Reduce the amount of salt that you're consuming. The guidelines for Canadians is now to have less than 2300 milligrams of sodium a day, which is less than a teaspoon from all sources. So we're talking um, from the salt that we add, the salt we use in cooking, the salt that we get on all of our processed foods. Our overconsumption of salt has led to an epidemic of high blood pressure. So this is something that is um, becoming a big public problem. Start reading labels. Find out how much salt is in the food that you're eating. Things that are visibly salty, you know is loaded with salt. Other things that we don't think of as being very salty are smoked, uh, cured foods. Uh, canned soups are loaded with salt, most of them. Some you can get now that are low in sodium. So look for those low sodium labels. Things that you can do instead of using salt in cooking is use lemon juice, herbs, seasonings are a great way to flavor food without adding extra sodium. Limit the empty calories foods such as pop, candy, cakes, cookies. Uh, they add up quickly in terms of calories without giving you a lot of nutrients. So I like to um, <clears throat> tell people to focus on are you getting nutrients when you're eating? And it's a new way of looking at what you are eating. Are you getting some nutrition when, when you're putting calories in your mouth? Well, there are a few myths uh, floating around around nutrition and osteoarthritis. Uh, a couple of the ones that we do hear about are things like avoiding citrus fruits or avoiding nightshade vegetables. Um, there's a variety of things that we do here. Uh, as far as citrus fruits go, there's no evidence to support eliminating that from your diet. In fact, they are an important source of nutrients and especially vitamin C, which we already learned was important to slow down the progression of symptoms. So um, nothing to support eliminating citrus fruits from your diet with osteoarthritis. The nightshade vegetables, which is um, a popular fad diet of years gone by, really has not been shown scientifically to be of any benefit. Nightshade foods include things like garlic and eggplant, tomatoes, potatoes, the list goes on. Um, they're a great source of nutrients and really shouldn't be eliminated from the diet. So really there are no foods that you should avoid due to having osteoarthritis.